first version of the movie started with Michael Shannon's character um, pounding on a bakery window trying to, to, to fix a cake that had the wrong name on it. Um, and the thing about that that stayed in the movie is that he is a very put upon, frustrated character in a, living in a life that can't that can't quite seem to go right. Um, and so the the story itself changed. The opening scene is is, is not that. Um, it starts off with her, and it starts off much more mysteriously. Um, but with all those different roles that she's playing, and all right. those different outfits and costumes and right. Right. paraphernalia. Right. What did she think about that? Did she? Did you pick each one? Well, no. Rachel Vess and I had quite a bit of collaboration figuring out the the look and feel of, of each of the characters. Um, you know, my costume designer would present ideas, and then we would talk about them with Rachel. We did the same thing with the hair and makeup people. We discussed wigs, uh, and we discussed how much to change her physically. You know, in some some ways I wanted her to look and feel completely different and then but then there was also the argument that she's doing it so fundamentally that to rely too much on the on on being master of disguise would be to miss the point of what she's doing that what she's doing runs much deeper there's this moment when you're a blank slate I realized I could be anyone I wanted this movie started in some respects because I had another movie that fell apart and and so I, I knew that I wanted in, in having more control over my filmmaking to do something small and so we grew, we ended up thinking okay a movie in one location a dinner party um, it's a subgenre of movie um, but we wanted to do something different we wanted to push it further and and so there's a, a good long chunk of this that takes place in that in the dinner party Imagine just leaving everything behind. You just go off the grid. Oh, I know someone who did that. What about you? I'm sorry? Where would you go? We thought it was very authentic, that it was a natural flow. And I understand that it was your favorite scene because you had to kind of keep tabs of what everybody was doing and work it in. Yeah, it was, um, it was challenging to shoot. Um, you know, I, I think after a certain number of takes, the actors really got up to speed, and it started to really click. And then, the, and then the trick is, you know, when you've got a couple of different conversations going on at the same time, uh, you know, both making sure that they're both real, but then also at a technical level, how to make sure that you can edit it. Um, so it was a fun challenge to do. Come on, you completely disappeared for 15 years, and then you show up, tell this crazy story, and run out the door. I don't like movies that spoon feed me, and I don't want to make movies that spoon feed the audience. I like to respect the audience, and 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 create a film where they lean in and they try and figure it out. And that happens both in the way that you parcel out information in the story, the reveals, the reveals, and also in the way that it's shot. And for us, my cinematographer and I really gravitated towards towards shots where you don't quite fully see what's going on, you know, and it creates a mystery within the frame. So you shoot someone, you know, slightly from, with the camera slightly behind them, and so you're kind of struggling to see them better, or they're in another room, or they're cut off by a door, door frame. I mean, the most famous one is, is Polanski's Rosemary's Baby, where Ruth Gordon is in the next room making a call, and she's half cut off, and the famous story is that when it was first screened, everyone in the audience all leaned to the right as if they were trying to see her better and I you know so that's to me that's that's quite enjoyable. Linda and I both commented that the use of reflection is is a theme that plays in a lot of scenes especially I love the the scene in the bathroom with the reflection off the tile you don't expect to, oh, yeah. to get reflection off a tile there's a message there isn't there? Um, one of the messages is listen to your cinematographer when he says I see a shot that I want to do <laughs> let him do it because uh, I that the shot of the bathroom tiles was something that he saw in the moment and there was a moment when in, in searching for the ending of the movie because there was a lot of um, the the ending that's in the movie now is not the ending that we scripted and on the journey from one to the other there was a moment where we contemplated ending on the shot of the bathroom wall um, with the idea being not simply that it's a nice frame, but that it's a, in some respects a blank slate. It's when everyone thinks they know who you are, then you're trapped. If you weren't a filmmaker, 
and we're going to change your persona or your identity, what would you be? Um, you know, it's it's funny thing about what I would be that the, when we were writing this film, my co-writer and I, a lot of the time was spent saying, well, what would you want to be? You know, because we're trying to figure out their glimpses of what this character does. And so a lot of times it, we had to sort out what our fantasies were from what her fantasies might be. And my co-writer would make fun of me because I kept trying to pitch him on her being an underwater welder. He, said, <laughs> he says I have this inordinate fascination, and I think he's right, with underwater welding. I, I'm a certified diver, but I, I just can't quite get my mind around how welding works underwater, and I want to try it.